Good day, YouTubers. Welcome back to my channel. So I was just talking to my nephew and my two nieces. And none of this information, I, I tried to get their numbers, their addresses from my sister. This is my sister and from my mother, from my brother. No one would give me anything. They wouldn't give me their addresses. They wouldn't give me any phone numbers. They wouldn't tell me anything. Why? And and all my relatives worldwide, I'm not allowed to have, I don't have any contact information for anyone in my family worldwide. Why? Because of this stolen money. So my nephew spoke, spoke to me. I had a 20 minute conversation with my nephew, uh, but neither one of my nieces would speak to me. Why? Because my nieces took the stolen trust money. How come I don't have any contact information for any of my relatives worldwide? Because they took the stolen money. Okay, so my nephew, the son of my sister, he went to trade school and he explained that he took a loan and he had to do, he had to pay for all of it. I believe him. My brother, who's also talking to me now, I have two brothers. I have a brother and I have a stepbrother. My stepbrother is the most prolific serial murderer and child molester in human history. Okay, and I keep telling the cops this. What's the problem with that? He's a cop. So literally, a, a police officer is the most prolific serial murderer in human history. But I digress. And I know where the bodies are buried, and I keep telling everybody. So then I called my two nieces, okay? And I had, to, I had to find this information. I had to find their addresses. I had to find their phone numbers. But this is the information age, and I'm not a dummy. So I called both of them directly. Okay. And the one niece, she was absolutely paranoid. She's like, how did you get my number? Why are you calling me? Is this your number? Why is this is a Maryland number? How do you? Oh. And she says, I'm at work. I'll call you back. She never called me back. Okay. And then I called her several more times. She wouldn't talk to me. Okay. And she just, you know, she just disappeared like a fart in the wind. My other niece, okay, the younger one, she had her husband call me and I had a nice long conversation with him. He was a really nice fellow, but Always believe what people do and never believe what they say. Neither of my nieces will speak to me. And that means, why? Because they took the money. They took the money. And the husband of one of my nieces admitted that she got a scholarship. Okay. What are we talking about? How, how did they launder this money? Scholarships. They laundered it as college scholarships. And they handed it out to everyone. My sister has two master's degrees and a doctorate, and all of this is stolen from the trust. Her best friend, she gave her best friend a full, full free ride to college and, and master's degree and her kids, and I know this. Okay, I used to have my insurance through these, through her kids, uh, and they were extremely dishonest people. Uh, and so at the meeting at in, in 2010, and I retired from the federal government in 2011. I took an early out. My sister was screeching about how my nephew, who I spoke to, refused to go to college, even though it was entirely paid for. So what that means is, I want you to understand, what that means is the people who stole this money are cops and lawyers. And so as dishonest and evil as they are, they very carefully read the conditions of the trust. The trust only pays out for college and university degrees, but will not pay out for trade or technical school. So my brother and my, and my nephew went to trade school, and so they didn't get uh, scholarships for this. Interesting. So in the most twisted way, the people who stole this money are following the law. <laughs> yeah. So in 2010, I had this long uh, meeting with Shem Steinberg. Okay. Shem Steinberg, the greatest uh, director of all time. Okay, he's, he's known as the greatest director of all times. He's really famous. He's a billionaire. He has an adopted black daughter who just announced her uh, porn career and started posting porn videos and then was promptly arrested for domestic assault. Yeah, that, that figures. Uh, and I think her porn career is dead too because I watched that video and oh my God, I had to run and throw up. So it was pretty bad. And I only watched it just because I just had, I had to, I just had to see, I had to, cause I know it. 
anyway, so during this meeting in 2010, they got like 100 people in the room. Okay. And, and one of the things that this evil monster, Shem Steinberg, did is he choreographed all these people thanking me for sending them to college and sending their children to college. And there were former co-workers. There was the daughter of my godfather, a whole bunch of people. They even brought people from all over the country and even overseas to sit in that room because Shem Steinberg is so evil. And now they're trying to pretend like the meeting never happened. Why? Because, and what happened when they did that? I started raging at them, demanding that they give me my trust now. And these monsters, they were pretending that I was being rude and they kept relentlessly talking nonsense for hours and hours and hours to torment me. Okay. They were, they were talking about gay people and they were blaspheming God. God is a woman and, and, and Jesus is Satan. And, and, oh, they were just, they're just evil. Uh, Shem Steinberg, Shem Satanberg is the most evil man alive on planet earth. I just want to say that that man who people think is a great director is the most evil man alive on planet earth. And he was a, a close and personal friend of Harvey Weinstein. And we know what Harvey Weinstein did. Harvey Weinstein is a punk compared to Shem Steinberg. He's a, to he's an absolute punk. Shem Steinberg is the devil. He's the devil incarnate. Okay. And people at the top, they're either very evil and very Machiavellian, or they're, they're truly great, amazing people who get there through merit. Shem Steinberg is not someone who got there through merit. He is someone who is the devil. So anyway, the high government, the high level government official who was leading this meeting is was a Polish Jew, okay? And he clerked for a Supreme Court justice. And he was just, he was letting Shem Steinberg tell him he was awed by the greatness of this evil man, Shem Steinberg, the greatest director ever, the greatest director and producer ever. And everyone knows who this guy is. He clerked for a Supreme Court justice. His path was all laid out. He graduated from an Ivy League school. He was appointed to run a federal agency. Okay, the next steps for this man, this Polish Jewish man, would be that they were going to give him a federal judgeship. Here's a federal judgeship. Uh, and then finally, if he performed well, he would ev he could even be nominated to the Supreme Court to be a justice. Okay, that was this man's track. Track his actions with regard to this meeting in 2010, where they held me hostage in a room for five and a half hours, were so vile and dishonorable and illegal that he literally flushed his he flushed his entire career down the toilet. <laughs> you dumbass! You dumbass! There were 20 federal agents in that room. There were 20 local and county cops. The DEA was there. The Secret Service was there. And, and 30 attorneys were in that room. Every single one of those people had an affirmative obligation to report, investigate, and act on the criminal allegations revealed in that room and on the audio tape, and none of them did. So the conditions of the trust they pay out only for college and university degrees. My nieces, there were two approaches that my nieces took. One niece, she went all in on the theft. She went full free ride. She went all the way to master's degrees, to a master's degree. She's unmarried. Uh, my other niece, she took a much more careful approach. I don't think she wanted to take the money at all, but it was foisted on her by my evil sister. And... So first she went to community college and then later to university to finish. And I actually think she feels guilty. And that's why her husband called me. Here's my offer for anyone who's going to talk to me. I'm going to try to keep this short because uh, there's two ways this can go. Anyone who talks to me and cooperates and gives me what they have and tells me what they know, just simply tells me what they know, is going to get full criminal immunity from me. They're not going to be charged. This is a RICO. Oh, man, oh, man, you're in a lot of trouble, let me tell you. Uh, and, and what are the charges going to be? They found $500,000 in Krugerrands, gold coins, in a safe deposit box in Washington, D.C., in my father's name. They found multiple foreign accounts in my father's name overseas. 
Okay. And millions and millions of dollars transferred between these accounts overseas. My father died without a will and he didn't, he didn't declare any of this money. Millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. He left it on the table. And my father, with the five, half a million dollars in Krugerrands, gold coins, sitting in a safe deposit two states away from where he lived, he didn't write a will. So <laughs> it's, it's really, that's stolen money. That's so obviously stolen money. And who found this? Who found these things? The FBI. So they're going to they're going to charge everyone with those crimes and there's direct links. They established direct links to Russian organized crime. And my father had a tattoo on his uh on his left chesticle uh that was a Russian mafia tattoo and I I'm pretty sure my stepbrother has the same tattoo because he's also Russian mafia. Also and he's a cop. They're both cops. Okay? They're both cops. So that's one option. Uh, these people uh, cooperate with me. Just tell me what they know. Send me what they have. I'll give them full immunity. Or the police will call and then they're going to interview everyone. And as soon as they do, they're going to charge each and every one of these people with crime upon crime upon crime upon crime. And then they're going to say, oh my gosh, what do you mean I'm going to spend the rest of my life in prison? And then they're going to say, okay, I'll cooperate. And the police will be like, great. And they'll tell them everything. And then what will happen? They'll cut those charges in half and they'll be convicted of the lesser charges, which are still felonies. Every one of you dumb shits is going to get charged and convicted of multiple felonies. And all the kingpins, like my brother who took the money, is going to, you're going to get death penalty charges. Okay. Because they haven't dug up the bodies yet. And when they dig up the bodies, all of you are going to be charged with. Murder, torture, kidnapping, rape, all these things. Why? Because it's a conspiracy. Anybody who took this money, you're going to be charged with all of the associated crimes. It's called RICO, Racketeering Influence Corrupt Practices Act. Look it up. They just, they just searched Giuliani's house, Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani wrote the RICO law. And, and it was implemented in 1997, and it destroyed the mafia. That's the law you're going to be prosecuted on under. So, you know, don't be like that Polish Jew who ran my federal agency and ruined his life because he listened to the evil Shem Steinberg, the most evil man alive on planet Earth. You call me up. You write me an email. There's a million ways to contact me. Contact me. In the comments, idiots, and tell me what you know, and I will save your bacon. I will save your life. Otherwise, you get what you get. It is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be, and I'm going to show you no mercy. Peace.